By the way, if you're wondering, tip of the day, I guess, tip of the day or secret of the day, um, I actually do the hey hey thing at the beginning and the end of my videos so that I can use my phone editing thing to actually edit where it began and end, um, where it begins and ends, um, or where I want it to anyway. Um, don't mind me, I'm dealt with my cat, so my Egyptian Mao is severely, severely allergic to her. Um, I'm going to be posting soon some puppy training videos that I found from a puppy that I was trying to help this girl train her dog like my dog. Um, and I don't think the parents really understood that in order to train a dog how my dog was trained, you had to teach it like a child. Like, the training was more, okay, these are do's, these are don'ts, these are rules, and then you build the this is how you save someone. This is how you, if somebody's choking, this is what you do. Uh, believe in, you know, trust people that have uniforms on because if somebody has a uniform on, they can usually get your parent, your, your fur baby parent help, you know. And so she learned how to tell a fireman from a policeman and a postman and the regular uniforms of like, you know, Amazon drivers or whatever she wouldn't she, she would like them but she wouldn't go to them for help so every time she would see a cop it was so funny every time she would see a cop she would just go the totally but then and like do this thing like to get their attention because that's what I trained her to do because you know cops see a pit bull running at them they're especially in Baltimore City they're they're gonna be you know afraid so I taught her to, you know, you go, you run to a certain point, then you stop. When they see you, and you know they see you, then you do something cute and amazing and get their attention. And they'll realize that you're, you know, friendly and, you know, then get them to follow you home for help. Um, but we'll get more on that. Um, I'll, I'll post the videos. I won't be narrating it up probably at all. It's just me try, um, doing the beginner training for this dog, which had severe anxiety. The girl had such severe anxiety. She had put lavender all over the dog. And I guess she read lavender calmed you down. And she didn't realize it was a, you had to use carrier oil and it was, it was a mess. Um, but her parents decided to go a different way. I mean, I was I was doing it very on the cheap because I more wanted to help her and saw me in her, you know, like the earlier me. But back to the point of this video, I will be posting those videos um, to give people ideas on how to train their animals, I'm going to say, because yes, you can train pretty much any animal, almost any animal. Um, Hamsters are harder, but they will do it if you if you go hard with it and be consistent and never stray from the rules. The rules are black and white and that's it. There are no changes. If, if you never change, never give in, never, there's no compromises, no nothing, black and white, they will learn the rules, they will learn how to act, they will learn how to act in a, a certain situation. So right now, I'm going to, I, I realized I was doing this and I, I wanted to go through this because maybe people didn't know how to do this. So I bought a whole lot. I bought, this is the alpaca fur, the alpaca roving, and it's very expensive and it's very, very soft. It's like, it's like kittens and boxes of kittens it's it's crazy soft so what I'm going to do is I'm going to braid this I already braided some of it and put it away so I'm gonna braid this again and how I do that is I'm going to put the opened end that way 
this arm through, turn it, okay, so it's crisscross because I'm going to make a slip knot. I'm gonna grab this. Any crocheters out there, you're gonna know this technique. Um, it's basically crochet. So what you're basically doing is you're gonna make a crochet chain. So once you make this slip knot, and that's the same part you grabbed, you grab this part, grab the long part, okay? And you're gonna pull that through. And you're gonna keep doing that. So your hand pretty much stays in the same place. You can tighten it if you want. You can not tighten it because you know this is really soft and fluffy and I don't want to unfluff it. Um, Unfluff? I don't know if that's a word. Really, really gotta start reading more books um, instead of writing. But me writing my book is coming along nicely, so. Um, I found this. Uh, if I do certain things that stress me out um, between knitting and now spinning, Crafting kind of zens me. Um, so this is what you do. And you just keep going like this. And I've realized that, yes, my channel has sort of turned into a, what my nephew would say, a vlog. Because I air all my issues out. And it's kind of lethargic for me. It's kind of works out my kinks. And, you know, anybody... If I ever want to date anybody, or they ever want to date me, I would probably wait a while, and then if I trusted them, I'd give them my YouTube channel and be like, hey, watch from the beginning. <laughs> Binge watch me. <laughs> this is me. You know. I'm a mess. This is me. <laughs> I'm a mess, but I'm a cool ass mess. Cool ass mess. I'm a hot ass mess. Okay, so. You see now how it's braiding, it's beginning to braid, and it's braiding this beautiful, and look how it's fluffing up, it's just fluffing up this alpaca, it's so good. Um, I actually got this from, let's see if it's on the box, is it still on the box? It, I feel like it is. It was from Etsy, and the girl gave me a, like, I got such good deals on Etsy because, um, I, I talked to the people and they kind of related. Okay, so it's from Judah Green from Green Designs. So if you go into Etsy and, and look up Green Designs and look up Alpaca Roving, like, oh God, this stuff's so soft. It's like Angora rabbits. Oh, they have Angora. They have Angora for like from the rabbits. People have Angora rabbit farms and they sell the Angora. It's so cool. I think my I think my cousin Max would like that because he's I started calling him the bunny man because he has uh or ha has or had, I don't know if he still has them, um two rabbits named Bugs and Lola. Which I thought was freaking awesome and ever since then I just started calling him the bunny man because <laughs> He showed me pictures, it was so freaking cute. And he did what I did, he built, a, he built a whole room for them, which is something I would do, something I did for my cats, you know? I always, I always build them a room, like Opal's in her room right now, that's why she's not photobombing me. Her, her room right now is part of my walk-in closet. <laughs> which, let me tell you, it's kinda rough on me uh, since my clothes are in there. Hey, I figured out this method with the shower curtain, um, but she's a dumpster baby, so she found a way around that. We're still working out the kinks, but uh, I believe if I don't want the chain too long, I believe if I get a steamer. I've heard people say that if I get the steamer, it would kill whatever in the in her saliva and fur that I'm allergic to. And it would help the fur drop off the clothes. So I'm hoping that might be the answer to my problem. So once I'm to this point, and I feel like my chain's long enough to go in this separate bag that I've chosen. 
I'm actually wrapping it in the paper that it came in and in the bag because I feel like the paper came, it was wrapped in this beautiful paper. And I feel like it was for a reason, you know? Um, so I'm gonna take this last strand and I'm gonna loop it around here and just make that that extra, you know, whatever. So this is, this, this is loose, it's nice and loose, it's not tight. This can fluff up, like this end is gonna probably fluff all the way to the other end. So now I can go like this and I have an alpaca pile. That's nice. I know it's never going to tangle. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do with the rest of this. And I leave one chain out for me to use and I do this with all my fiber. I do it with the silk um the merino wool and uh i have mulberry silk merino wool and the alpaca because when i bought yarn from a bunch of different places um i noticed that the yarn that i loved the most were made of those three ingredients I still have to get a little bit of nylon, um, but that's not that much money, so I'm not really worried about it. There's some, there was something else that I'm missing too, um, that I wanted to make something out of, but I, I'll figure it out. You know, it's it's a process. Um, I did, I I had that practice. Um, I had that practice yarn. And as you can see, yeah, this is my first, my first actual spool of yarn and it kind of looks weird, but it's, it looks weird just because I mixed white with purple and I kind of like it. It's kind of like marbly and weird, but I did that. I mixed the two colors and I spun, I kept spinning until I got used to how much to feed in to equal what I wanted and what would do different spins and what would do different twists and how it would, you know, react to my fingers and the way I would pull back. And I tried everything. Like I, I went this way, that way. I did it, I did it all. And I did it in sections. So this section is different than this section and it's different than this section. So I just was like, oh, this way, this way. And then I used, um, which was really uncomfortable, but I, f I tried to feed it in with my right hand, which it was weird because I feel like me being right-handed, maybe I needed more control in the back and that just felt more comfortable for me. It just feels more comfortable for me. So I'm just gonna wrap this little fuzz around here and that'll stick there. And that's my first little yarn. My, my first little yarn experiment that wasn't didn't turn out to be an abomination. And that's all thanks to a lady named Julia who realized that I did not know that this was the handbrake. Like, well, not hand, a handbrake. I'm not sure what it's called. I know it's a brake. It's a wheel brake. Okay. So I did not realize that this had to be tighter to slow this down to make it so that it would wrap around the bobbin at the proper pace. And the looser this is, the faster it goes. And the tighter it is, the slower it goes. So it's like kind of, you got to find where, what's good for you. And it's this specific piece um, with this leather thing. This is what was, I had it so loose because I thought, I thought that the, I thought that for some reason I thought like that the stuff had to just flow in and that the looser it was, the better it was. I didn't realize that this little break thing would affect how the we how the flyer was reacting with the bobbin because it's, it's a bobbin um, system. It's a bobbin based system, but she told me to look at 
So um, she told me to look at the Louis Louette 17 videos and that this wheel would act a lot like that. And so I found my little spot and I actually counted how many smidges. If you watch my other video, this is each one of these little grooves I call a smidge. So um, yeah, I know how many of those smidges that I need personally. <laughs> Um, to equal where I'm comfortable with this thing. Um, I also took the Diz that they sent me from Good and Basic and I tied it to the other side of the handbrake or the brake, whatever it is. Um, and I just have it hanging there, cool, like, you know. Um, so my other one fell on the floor because I got to play with it. But I thought I would share that with you. Um, so if you have this wheel and you're having problems, that might be it. But hopefully the next time you see this wheel, it'll be all painted up with my um, my awesome black roses and everything. I'm going to make it mine. Yeah, it's going to be cool. But that is how you wrap your roving. Um, I wrapped all my roving like that. I actually got this off of Amazon, which I'm going to try out um, pretty soon, probably. There we go. That's a nice chunk to try out first. Um, probably not going to do it tonight, you know. So, going to braid this as well, honestly don't want anything tangled or confused and this is how you chain it and it's literally the same thing um, this would be the chain from doing crochet and this is how you chain 13 or 31 or however this is your beginning chain just in a bigger way to do it. So if anybody's thinking about taking this big roving and actually doing hand crochet with it, you can. You can make a whole blanket out of this. Um, you can get a big ball of, of the merino wool like I have. Like, like my big ball, actually, she had a picture of her making a blanket out of the big ball. And it was like 60 bucks. I got a deal. Um, it was like a beginning of the year sale or something. I don't know. I got some kind of deal. I always get, I try to get a deal. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to leave this like this and let this part hang off because that'll be the next chunk I pull out of there. And then as you pull this, it'll just, section by section, it'll just come out for you and it'll be so easy to access. So that's how you do that. And... Yeah, happy crafting, man. I'm still actually not done with the purple that the um, the people with the Diz sent me. Um, it's, a, it's really a beautiful purple and it really spins really nice. Uh, so I might contact Pamela Schultz, I think is how it's pronounced, from Fiber Sprite on Amazon. And I might ask her, like what fiber this is that she sent me. Um, oh, look, she has, nice. So they have information on the inside of the box that I, I, I didn't really pay attention to. It says, uh, we hope you love your new spinners multi-tool. You can find, oh, a tutorial on how to use it. <laughs> Which, I will definitely look up because I was getting confused on exactly how to put the yarn to look at the grist. I know by looking at it, um, when it's mixed with the white, like I can tell how the spin is and I, how I want it and how I like it because I've seen so many other yarns and I know which yarns that I liked and I know their, their spin I know what it looks like. I'm probably a degree off or something, but my eyeballs liked it. So 
So this is like a mix of my mulberry silk, my merino wool, and the purple. And this was just like some kind of nappy messed up stuff, but I'm gonna reuse it into the thing. And that'll be that. This is my pretty, pretty, pretty alpaca. So I'm gonna put that back in the box. And it's gonna go into a bag and it's going to go into a sealed container with um, those cedar balls to keep bugs away. Um, and somebody told me to put like, um, if I make a wool ball and put like lavender, uh, lavender cedar uh, and, what was it? Lavender cedar and like tea tree oil or rosemary. Oh, basil, basil, that it'll keep the bugs away. I was like, that's so cool. So I could literally just tie a knot of cheap wool and just put some essential oil on it and stick it in the, in the container and it'll be fine and smelling good. So there's your tip of the day. See you later and hopefully I will show you how I spin this up. I hope it looks really pretty. This is um, a blend of silk and merino wool and I had a coupon and a gift card and I used it. It's 26 bucks for like two ounces. I am so excited. Namaste people. <laughs>